There we go. All right, we are live, and the New York Mets are still, still, still the best team in the National League. I don't know how many of them are still in one piece right now, but they're still in first. Yep. And that's all that matters. I mean, at what point do you also, like, we should be the best story in baseball. <laughs> the turnaround that we've had, the injuries we've sustained, the shit that we've gone through, and we're still there. And somehow, some way, everybody else is sucking every other team's dick. It's wild. <laughs> I want to almost blame you, Kevin. I feel like it's just all like everyone's just mad at you and they don't want what? you to be happy. So they're all just like, you know, we're not going to give the Mets their – give them their flowers or whatever. Probably. Probably. Everybody, yeah, you know what? It's my fault. You, you don't hate me. You hate your dad. You don't hate me. You, hate, you, you don't hate the Mets. You hate me, you fucking losers. <laughs> so two out of three against the Brewers. Obviously, we're recording this on Friday afternoon instead of Thursday because let's be honest, last night – was going to affect how we felt about the series, yep. how we felt about the team, how we felt about the race. I'm on the record of saying, I don't give a fuck about the Braves. I, I don't know. give a fuck about the Phillies. And I, I don't give a fuck, most certainly, about the New York Yankees in an entire fucking league of baseball. I understand there's plenty of people who do. But right now, I'm just worried about my guys. And I'll tell you, boys, they're dropping like flies. Tyler Miguel, shoulder issue last night. Dude, I mean, let's let's be real. It, it's over for Tyler. Like, he's not... Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, expecting bad news, and I'm expecting them to be very cautious with a very big, young, promising player. Like, as much as I want to go all in, I, I just don't see you come back from one injury and you're out right away again. I feel like you're going to be out for a it's very. Just, long time. It's just the life of a starting pitcher. He throws hard and he has shoulder discomfort. I mean, that's just what it is now. I, yep. Yeah. So we have. I, Tyler I, I'm just not out. hopeful there. Yeah. Tyler goes down last night. For the people that missed it, myself included, the night before, Marte gets hit by the pitch, comes out with a giant ass bandage on, and the Mets are so banged up they have to use him to you know pinch run. They have no one else on their bench other than Patty Mazzy. Um, uh, Canna gets hit in the thumb, which you know radars up on that one because that never never had to worry about that coming to haunt us last night because the Brewers do not play fundies, the worst fundies I've seen by a quote unquote good team in a very very long time. Um, Eduardo Escobar, I don't know what's going on with Eduardo Escobar. They said it's a non-workplace event. Was that the exact – That's the exact event? phrasing, non-workplace event. So non we workplace don't event. know. So we're not going to take any guesses here. Like we were saying on the group chat last night, Mets fans talk more about health than they talk about baseball. So it's like that we, – we've been through there a million times with, uh, you know, phantom injuries, all that kind of stuff. It's at the point now – where Pete Alonso is one of the healthiest guys we have starting for us. And we thought he fractured his head like a week ago. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think uh, Francisco Lindor has a fractured finger still. I think oh, he's just- yeah, oh, it's, yeah, that's not going away. No. I mean, I, I gave you the lineup last night. We have Nimmo with his wrist issue, Cannon with his thumb, Marte with his forearm, Pete with his carpal bone, whatever the fuck that is. And that's all on top. <laughs> Of Jacob Degrom and Max Scherzer, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It's 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 bananas it's, right now. I got excuses. You know, injuries are not excuses, but like it's a reason why teams usually stop winning. And the fact that these guys haven't is you know testament to Buck yeah. and, and them and their talent and their guts. It's it's wild. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. So, and as always, what do we say? The one thing that will help you chill out during all the mayhem is your Coors Lights. And trust me, boys, we're the first place in the National League, but I think we can still use some fucking Coors Lights because it's going to help chill us out. Obviously, you have your weddings, graduations, barbecues going on outside. Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial. Kind of love that phrase. Celebrating the moments that are going to make summer spectacular, including this baseball team, which is going to keep winning despite all these injuries. I'm telling you, watching the Mets with my ice cold Coors Light and my Blue Mountains makes it all better. The mountains on the can turn blue when the beer is cold. You know how it works. And that's the way you know it is time to chill. And this is what our friends at Coors Light is doing. Obviously, we're going to be drinking them at the parade with the cake and the punch down the road. However... Their, their new little tagline, Summer Chill starts with Coors Light, and they say make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, or even a trip to New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles. All you have to do, you enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash believe. That's the URL we've been giving you guys. Again, CoorsLight.com slash believe. Sweepstakes ends eight, uh, August 15th, 2022. Game ends September 6th, 2022. 50 US DC, 21 and older. Uh, boy, we're prohibited. For rules, visit CoorsLightSummer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Okay, um, let me get some shit off my chest. I got to get some shit off my chest. I've had some shit brewing that I've been 
trying to tweet and then deleting and saving in drafts because you just can't do this shit over Twitter. So let me get some thoughts off of my brain. Tell my man, son. Tell my man. The to the Braves fans who are uh, very, very active on social media and chirping, which is fair game. You're on your you're on your big win streak. I get that. When I respond to other fan bases who started talking shit about us, that's not me being scared. That's not me being nervous. That's not me being rattled. That's me arguing against people who have dumb fucking sports arguments in my mentions. And people say, what Braves fans are saying this? What Braves fans are saying that? I don't know, man. Check my mentions. Mm -hmm. I understand the whole world doesn't live on Twitter. But in this world, on this blog, on this podcast, and on social media, everywhere, Braves fans, we're coming, we're better than you, we're blah, 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 blah. So I am responding to them. That is not me. If If I was waking up in cold sweats tweeting about the Braves out of nowhere, that would be different. That's not what's happening. I am responding to everything they've said. When they said our wins don't matter against good teams, and now I'm pointing that out when they're patting themselves on the back, that's me just pointing, proving you wrong. That's me pointing out that we are unfairly holding the Mets to a different standard than teams like the Braves and Phillies. And I know why they do it, because it's LOL Mets, but it's not LOL LOL Mets anymore, so shut the fuck up. Secondly, the Mets are playing good baseball. I understand that they're losing a they're losing ground in the division because the Braves have won 15, 14 straight. Newsflash. If the Braves never lose again, they're going to win the division. Straight <laughs> up. Yes, we will lose this lead. We if the Mets were playing bad and we were losing because of that, I would be I would be criticizing the team. The people saying you don't criticize the Mets at all. There's nothing to criticize about the Mets. Mets. The Mets are playing good. The Mets are doing what good teams do when they go through a West Coast swing and go through a, a tough part, part of the schedule. If they were getting swept, if they were playing lazy, if they were getting shellacked, I would be I would criticize them. The Met, I, there's nothing to criticize about the Mets. There's only you got to tip your cap to the Braves and recognize that they're playing at an unsustainable rate. I had people in my mentions saying, "Well, the Mets have never the, the Mets have never won 14 in a row. So, like, why don't you why don't you say that?" I, uh, is that is that the bar? I'm supposed to criticize the team because they haven't won 14 in a row? Okay, I'll do that. Man, the Mets, Jesus Christ, what can you say about them? They can't even win 14 games in a row. You fucking assholes. Thirdly, that, that promo that they ran on SNY that Gary read drove me fucking crazy. And it was for our guy, mm. Joe DeMeo's podcast. He reached out to me. I wanted to have him on this show, but he said his day job. He, he couldn't come on. Um... Fuck you, Joe DeMeo. We're beefing now. <laughs> I mean, when I found out it was Joe DeMeo's podcast, I was like, oh, this is hilarious because the last person on earth who is doom and gloom, sky is falling, is Joe DeMeo. So, Gary, if you missed it, it was so subtle, but I'm so hyper aware of these things. He came back from commercial, and Gary said, you know, uh, like, download the SNY app today for blah, 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 and check out the SNY Mets podcast where they'll talk about the shrinking lead the Mets have in the NL East. Is it literally... You know, by the words, uh, is it shrinking? Yes. But we all understand what the, the, you know, information is behind that. And we know that dumb, negative, clickbait bullshit always rallies this fucking awful fan base. And if you listen to that podcast and you talk to Joe, he said nothing of the sort. He's not talking about how we're losing our lead. He's just talking about, like, the situation at hand. Again, the lead is shrinking through no fault of the New York Mets. And in, until... We as a fan base and as a, a TV network and as a broadcasting crew and everything else, get rid of this bullshit negative clicks sell and, and sec, you know, like sex sells. Well, negative sells with the Mets. And that fucking sucks because what the headline should read, what the story should be right now is that the Braves have won 14 in a row and the Mets still have a nice four game cushion. I don't know any team in the world who's ever won fucking teen, have a, a, a win streak in the teens. And still not overtaken first place. They, they can sweep their way through the shitty Cubs this weekend and have a 17-game winning streak. And the Mets could still be in first place. Because that's what you do. That's what you've earned. That, that's the, the, the comfort you've earned in a 10-and-a-half game lead is that when another team goes on a crazy hot streak and you go through the difficult period and still play good, you still keep first. Fourthly and lastly, it's June. So for the a team that just won the fucking World Series, we are certainly talking a lot about the standings and the schedule and winning in June. The Mets could actually fully blow this lead 
And I still wouldn't be upset because it's going to come down to the Bre- the Braves and the Mets and maybe the Phillies, we'll see, in their head-to-head matchups. That's, this is going to be a fight to the finish. Anybody who thought it was going to be a double digits lead for the whole season is an idiot. And blowing a lead in June is not even – like I was talking to Feidelberg yesterday. He was like, why are you guys even talking about this? <laughs> and I, got, I get in my mentions people saying, I, well, you know, the Mets, uh, the Mets lost five games off their 10-game lead. I'd say that's pretty newsworthy. It's not. It's literally not. The headline of Mets lead in June goes from 10 to 5 is not a big fucking deal. And I'm honestly a little surprised and disappointed in the Braves chirp crew that they're chirping so much about ball games in June. So that's my piece. And fuck anybody who's blaming the Mets for the Braves win streak. Fuck anybody who's who's blaming the Mets fans for defending themselves against the things that other fans said about us. And fuck anybody who thinks the sky is falling because we're losing a, a, a few games off the pace when a team is undefeated for the last fucking month. And, and also, if- fuck the Yankees, man. <laughs> Lose the goddamn ball game for once. That's and- part of the problem. The Mets, the, 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 what I said last night, the game was tied at four. And I felt like we were down by 10 runs because everything's been so stressful. And I know my esteemed colleague, Clem, here is an adult and he's mature and he can say, I don't really care about the Braves, Phillies, or Yankees. But for someone like me, when the Braves never lose, when the Yankees never lose, it makes every like it feels like we have a razor thin margin for error because all of our rivals are doing are playing so well that it's like if you give up a lead, if you if you let them score a run, if you strike out in a single at bat, it feels like oh fuck. So as soon as like some sort of order can be restored and some of our rival teams can come back down to earth, everything will be fine. Thank you. And if you're down with any of those people, fuck you too. That's what I wanted to put on the top. Um, I, I honestly like granted 16 years ago now, but I, I don't remember like standings watching at all during 2006. And that was a much different season. And I'm sure there was not a team that won 14 in a row in second place, but I do not give a fuck. And for the record, boys, I bet live bet the Mets when they were down four, two last night, this team is different. This team comes back and wins. Just enjoy this team. The chirpers, the Braves fans, all that kind of stuff. Like that, at, at some point I'm like, ignore it. But at some point it's like, well, it's baseball season. It's like, if you're not going to, you know, have some fun and talk shit now, there's no point in doing it. Like if you, I hate people that just talk shit after they win. It's like talk yep. shit and get into it during it. Don't wait until the it's, you know, final in the, in the scoreboard, in the scorebooks. And then you talk shit. Well, where were these fucking fans when they were losing? Now they're winning. Now they're coming out of the woodwork. I clearly remember last year, big T was like, I think we should trade Freddie Freeman and punt on the entire season because that's how their fan base is too. You just have like, People who are unrealistic. Where's the show me the rule that says that the Mets need to lead the division wire to wire? Right. I would I mean, love if it happened. Went like, crazy. The right. expectations went from like, hey, maybe let's hopefully contend for the playoffs to we cannot relinquish or not even relinquish a lead. We can't have less than a, a 10 yeah. game cushion. We were going in when DeGrom got hurt. Everyone's like, I would take the second wild card. Now it's like, no, we need an eight game lead no matter what minimum. And the other thing is, when the only team that I could say that for is the Yankees, because I heard on the radio yesterday they can play 500 baseball the rest of the way through now, and they'll still have 96 wins at the end of the season. Bro, they're not. That is the only team they're that's going to win wire to wire. You want to know the, the the craziest stat I've ever seen, maybe like legit in my life? The Yankees this year are 39 and four when they score. Three runs. <laughs> That's disgusting. That is fucking disgusting. I, 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 you know, I will always argue. I will always make fun of them. I will always chirp. I do actually believe that the Mets are a team that can contend with absolutely anybody. And I like the way that we have done it like consistently. And I thought the Yankees were going to be more of like a hot streak sort of thing. But at this point, they're, it's very strange for that team to be that good. Like, the 98 Yankees made sense. Those two thousand, like the late 90s, 2000s teams, they were stacked, made sense. This is what I kind of expected when they first went and got Mike Stanton. I was like, oh, my God, they're going to win 1,000 games. And I guess it just took like four whatever seasons for that to click. But for this to be the year that they're on like the greatest pace of all time, I don't – yeah, that's baseball, Susan. I don't know. So, yeah, that's the only team you can really be like, you guys, you guys, uh, you know, the, the bar is so high because you're – you're playing that good. The rest is just like normal fucking baseball ups and downs and lefts and rights and leads and, and losses. And you'll see who's there in the end. And I know that people will play these. Like if the Braves do take over, you look at me and I look hysterical and I'm gesticulating and I'm screaming and yelling and people will be like, look how hot and bothered he is. And it's like, I'm hot and bothered by your stupidity. I'm not hot and bothered by the, 
the regular uh, ins and outs of, of a baseball season. I'm, I'm bothered by fucking dumb fans and stupid people on social media, which you think I'd be over by now, but I guess I'm not. And our good friend Buster Olney, I probably heard him to, to tweet this out. To teams on pace to win 100 plus games this year, the Mets, the Padres, the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Astros. We're on pace to win 100 plus games, and you're going to think the sky is falling. First place, best team in the National League, despite <laughs> despite legitimate injuries, and people are are same old Metsing. I mean, like what? I honestly, I hate being a part of the fan base with those people. I hate that they get to, to ride the wave of success, and and then and, and then if we do ever win, that they'll be like happy about it. Like I am a one thousand percent. Frank is locked out of whatever our right. celebration party is because right. I'm looking at the replies and like it's like <laughs> Buck Stan accounts where then you go through the tweets and it's clearly not a Met fan and he's like, look, see, they agree with me. I'm like, Frank, I you don't understand how the internet works if you think that those guys are on and, your side. You know what? And you know what though? Sadly enough, there probably are. Yeah. Actual real Mets fans who are on his side and fuck them too. Our boy, our boy Mets twenty one twenty eight. I'm sure he's probably like losing his mind right now down yeah. in Carolina. <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine some of the, the bullpen moves or or like pitch selections that he's he's gonna pick apart. Despite the fact that just yet again another two out of three series win. Like, what and, do you, uh, yes, I guess we should sweep more often. Like that one guy who tweeted me said the Mets should win fourteen in a row. You are right. Run the fourteen in a row play. Okay. Other than that, you can't criticize the team. And then you go back through our recent losses. What did we do Wednesday? Oh, we lost to the reigning Cy Young Award winner when we had our seventh starter pitch. How did we lose Saturday? Mike Trout and Shohei Otani fucking went nuts. Then we played the Padres. We missed two of our, our best players getting hit, and we faced two aces. It happens. And, and our last two losses versus the Dodgers. We just played good teams, and that's what happened. And you know what? Even if there was a couple games in there that was just like, we sucked. Because sometimes in 162 games, you just fucking suck. And, and and there's actually been a reason you can point to. Like Peterson, God love him. He did a great job filling in. That, you know, theoretically should be a Max Scherzer start. And it wasn't. And so like that's one of the first times since the Scherzer injury I can point and be like, that would have been a W or that would have been different. So on top of all those reasons, there are just going to be games where you stink. And God damn it, you guys fucking – suck as fans if you can't can't handle that at all can't handle a loss here and there i'm already spin the yankees too where it's like i want them to win as many games as possible because they're not going to win in the playoffs then like that's just how my mind just, works just have the greatest record of all time be the new mariners the mariners <laughs> Golden state warriors like anytime the team has like a historic run it's always like the fall is just spectacular yeah, and i would love to see that correction and fill it's the 72 and 10 bulls and then they get it all and it's like oh fuck i don't know i mean I feel like we've been playing with fire for a long time. I don't know how they haven't been good when they got Cole and they had, and you know what? I mean, it's just, it's usually a, just a judge injury. That's really the difference. And he's finally healthy and everybody's clicking. And then you get lucky with a guy like Nestor Cortez and the rest of their fucking, they're, they're out of nowhere pitching. And it's just like, I don't know, maybe we've been playing with fire for a long time, had a really long streak. This is going to be, <laughs> and of course, it's the year the Mets are good. Like I swear to God, a Subway Series would kill me. No, a Subway Series in 2000 probably killed a lot of people. Actually, like murdered them. <laughs> so, uh, in the social media age, and especially in the where we work and with some of the people we work with, like if there is if there was ever a Subway Series, I don't even know who would end up like giving you the death blow. Like, would it be Tommy? Would it be Hubs? No. Would it be Frank? Would it be Portnoy? Like, our heads are on a swivel. We have no allies. And this is the thing. If the Mets and the Yankees did face each other, like, Portnoy would have to choose between the Yankees yep, and bro. you. <laughs> Think yeah. about that. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it pits a lot. A lot of weird shit comes out where, you know, the, what what's like strange bedfellows and the enemy of my enemy is my friend and shit like that. I think it was Evan Roberts. I didn't see... Uh, he, I think he like wrote an article and had a segment on on WFAN where he was like, nobody should want a Subway Series. Like it's not good for either fan base. And I didn't get a chance to hear what he said or why, but I'm assuming it's kind of like the stakes of winning a World Series are already so high. We don't need to raise them that much more that it's like the ultimate fucking game. You know what I mean? Like we could beat the goddamn Mariners in the World Series and I would be over the moon. If we ever beat the Yankees, I would. It would be the greatest moment of my life. 
but I'm not a gambler. I don't like to risk the greatest moment of my life for what will undoubtedly be the worst moment of my life. And I think the Yankees, it's kind of the same thing. Like if the Yankees lose to the Mets, then fucking forget about it, you know? So I do understand that the, the notion that it's like, you know, it's kind of like launching nukes. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't need to go that far with it. But man, is that certainly on the table this year? Jesus Christ. Are we ready for this series coming up now? I mean, we kind of we discussed the Brewers real quick. The The first inning of the first game was an absolute shit show for the Brewers. Like, no fundies at all. Gave us the lead. End up winning. The last inning of the last game, just a complete debauchery when they were in the field and then when they were at the plate. Um, then the, the base running all that shit. I, I, can't believe, I can't believe he was out at the plate. He must have lost. He must have run out of gas rounding third because mm-hmm. that ball was rolling oh. into no man's land for like 30 seconds. I was like, he's absolutely scoring. I that- cannot believe it. The ridiculous send. He never had a chance. I'm just happy Nito got the tag down. Yeah, right. And I mean, to, what was that? What that, that was the second out of the inning. So one yeah. out, to third. I know. I know Diaz is great, but like Jesus Christ, that's oh. a like you get fired the next day sort of send. Can, can we just talk about how Buck walking out to Edwin Diaz be like, "Do you want to pitch to Yelich?" And him just no doubtly saying, "Yes, I want to pitch to him," and striking him out. I love the the, the visit from Buck, like just because yep. that Diaz does get overhyped, and he, I think he gets emotional. And that would have been a spot where if they didn't send him, he's he's in like a, a tough spot. Like, just go out there, calm him down. You know Buck just goes out there and says something too, like, you know, strike this motherfucker out. You know, like in, in his little Buck way. And it's yeah. like, cool. <laughs> That's a great point. The Buck fucking accent is so great. I don't know what it is, but it's great. And, you know, uh, Frank tweeted us, and I was like, oh, Diaz is a little shaky. I was like, yeah, Frank, he struck out two batters instead of three. That was a shaky performance for Edwin Diaz. And, and the, the, the the double, you know, it was like a bloop over the guy's head. And yeah, so- same thing with a run throw it. Nothing like off the end of the bat. Right. And I am not going to, you know, ha- congrats, to the, congrats to the Hater family, the new bundle of joy in their lives. Very happy he's gone. Again, like, we're taking injuries, but we're getting a little bit of luck. The uh, I know the Astros shortstop is out for the series, which is going to be a double whammy because if we play them twice in like a week, it's really weird to have home and home, but they're exactly a week apart in the middle of the week for two-game series. It's very odd how that all just happened to pan out. And now we got to go to the Marlins coming up next, which – this is, I, am, I know this series is going to be a pain in the ass. It's just going to be a pain in the fucking ass. I know this is crazy. I am way more scared of this than the Dodgers. I <laughs> I don't blame you. Terrified. Because if you lose to the Dodgers, it's like, they lost to the Dodgers. We're going to lose to the Marlins again. And a wraparound series is always weird. And we're going to face Alcantara. And it's just like, you know, you know Jazz Chisholm is hitting one at least one, to the moon. You know Alcantara is going to mow us down. And what really sucks is because it's a four-game series, the Braves are going to sweep the Cubs. So they're going to win 17. And then we'll have one more game with the Marlins after that happens. And so I just I just have a bad feeling about that Monday game. It's going to mean a lot in terms of the standings. And we're going to get butt-fucked by him. And it's it's – you know, this team is different, but I don't know. Some things, I think, are eternal. And I mm-hmm. think the Marlins being motherfuckers are one of those things. Uh, they don't have a, a – uh, at least on ESPN, they don't have a probable tonight. We have Cookie going. Um, it, it may be Pablo Lopez. I have no idea. It'd be unfortunate if it is because he's, like, one of the best starters this year. But he had, like – I think he got hit with a wrist in Houston and he, his bullpen session didn't go good. So maybe Pablo may not be. I don't know. We'll find out okay. later. Okay. Yeah, this, this, what sucks is that, like, technically I think the gauntlet is back on because four with them and then to Houston is, like, that's another six-game stretch that technically by the records and standings isn't, like, oh, no, but we all know how that goes. Yeah, No, 100%, because, like, everyone, every single person I've heard talk about the Marlins this year is, like, they're good, they're plucky, they're fun, they're going to be there at the end, like, scrappy. That's just a team that is just not going to give you a win. Like, the Brewers just gave us fucking wins. Bro, the Brewers. <laughs> or a team that – that is, you know, was or supposed to be in contention. They don't run out ground balls. They play bad defense. They make mental mistakes. It was like, this is Met, this is LOL Mets shit. This is LOL Brew Crew. Yeah, it was bad. So um, we'll see what happens with with Miami now. The biggest thing, though, internally, this team, the injuries, all that kind of stuff. I don't know what's going on with Escobar. I'm, I, I, we, I would imagine we get some sort of maybe just they're just going to be like, if he's playing or not. I don't know if they're going to give any kind of update when they throw HIPAA around. Bucks throwing on HIPAA. I'm like, yeah. all right. This isn't going anywhere quick. That actually made me think uh, – someone DM'd me and asked, do you think it's like a mental health issue? Because HIPAA is weird to me because all we ever do 
is report on injuries and talk about and speculate. We pe- people are tweeting out, uh, you know, a- MRI and X-ray results, like you know, on a whim. Like HIPAA is never really a thing. I feel like unless someone, you know, unless the player and the team really make it a point to keep something quiet, and maybe there's some sort of embarrassment. If like if you're if you're Appendix is bursting. You just fucking tell us if you uh, had some sort of, you know, physical attack, you know, whatever you usually would just report that, especially because you want to rule out all the people who are on Twitter and shit going like, what if he's dead? What if his family members are dead? So to not hear anything and then to be like, we don't, you know, we're not allowed to talk about anyone's health. It's like, yeah, we are. I don't know. We do it all the fucking time. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think Darren's uh, tip was true. I think he saw someone uh, – he saw him leaving an ambulance. So then for it to be a non-workplace thing, it's like, well, he was at work because that – I mean, I, I do believe that. I think a city field employee saw that and told him that. Um, and then – I don't want to speak for Darren, but we were talking about it. He basically got like a string of texts from that person, and w- like one of the texts were broken up and made it sound like Escobar's okay, but it, it, he just kind of like misread it. So that's why he had like retracted it. So it was just a messy situation on Twitter, but I believe that happened. I think he got taken away. And, you know, so why, uh, I just, there's just such a, it's a very bizarre thing to have no update now. And with all respect to Darren, I would have been perfectly fine. I was just never tweet, and we just only found yeah. out about Escobar after the game. Like, I would have been sitting there thinking, like, oh, Escobar's not on the lineup. Maybe it's just a day off. Yeah. And then they just would, wouldn't even have noticed it. No, I mean, that's, you know, the one thing that we really have yet to, like, conquer uh, on Twitter is, like, injury speculation and when tragedy strikes and breaking news. And, like, you really should just probably never tweet that stuff. But I – if I got a tip like that, I probably would have tweeted it out and said something along the same lines. You know, I can't say 100% true, but just so Mets fans know, and you really just shouldn't do any of that, and so it's better to stay out of those things. But since we do know, and it is out there, and they that usually changes the rules. Like, if, if the Mets were like, we'll keep this quiet, fine. But it's not quiet. If something got out there. So now you got to switch, like, your gears, and I would think they would switch to, let's let everybody know he's actually okay which scares me if it's like, what if he's not? And, but this is all more speculation. So I don't know. You just hope it's like, uh, it just seems weird to cite HIPAA and keep things quiet when that's, you know, we all know about this guy's hand and that guy's foot and this guy's results and all that shit. So I, I think it's going to be like way, you know, more important than just like baseball games and shit. So I and it's also like to be removed from the clubhouse. I'm assuming like on a stretcher to the ambulance, he's not, why are they calling him an ambulance? If he's able to just like get on it himself type of thing, like yeah. that makes you think it was something internal where it was like a shocking moment. That's why like I texted you guys, but before the game, I was like, don't expect them to come out with any type of like vigor. They're going to come out flat. Cause this it's dude probably like that's not in the clubhouse. Yeah. yeah. We, we had, there was people, let's see what we had. We had a heat stroke. We had, you know, serious like heart condition, um, appendix appendix burst. I think was being thrown around. Like people are just making shit up in their door. And it's like literally. That, that's literally. just those Mets fans. That yeah. this is the one fan base where I can completely understand. Even the non workplace event, that is something I could have seen in a Photoshop on the old Mets Twitter account <laughs> what back in the day. Well, what it, it's like, you know, we always have these dumb phrases. You know, your elbow is barking, or what? What was Cespedes's? It was like a. He had like a non-workplace event type of title too, where it was like a, a horse no. beast injury or something like that. A, no, no, no. Non, a non-horse injury. Non-horse injury. Non-horse related injury. <laughs> non horse injury. How no, is this in real life as a fan? It's like, how do we look so, like this? It's so stupid. It is so dumb. And we're just sitting here on the edge of like every single tweet from Tacomo and Healy and Puma and everybody, and nobody knows. And it's like, I'm laughing, and I hope it's, it ends up being, you know, something we can laugh about. But God damn, it's just always a fucking adventure, man. Yeah, so so hopefully Escobar's all right. We're gonna- <laughs> Honestly, it, maybe it's sticky stuff. Do the Mets have to change their approach at the plate? Do they just have to stand <laughs> more, like, away from the plate? It's At some point, it's like, you can't all – you can't all go to the DL 
by for getting hit by pitches. You can't do that. The the book on how to pitch the Mets that other teams do, you want to pound them inside with fastballs, and apparently these guys can't control themselves, so we have a guy getting hit, man, wrist, forearm, every other fucking day. The, okay. the literal scouting report is to pound them with fastballs, not yeah. inside. They're human. Their body, pound them with fastballs, and then they have to leave the game, and then the bench player is not as good as the starter. It's actually not a bad idea. That's how you take down the number one team in the National League. That we had one man awesome. bench last night. It was Patrick Mazika. If Canada got taken out, we'd have Patrick Mazika in left field. Oh, that was scary, dude. That was, And then – for that, for that game to be decided, thank God the Brewers decided to just hand it to us. Because with the game on the line, to have Nito and Plummer up when, you know, and we could only pinch run with Marte and you have nothing else on the bench, it was like, oh, my God. I said, you know, the old Mets wouldn't score here. And even the new Mets look like the old Mets when you have Nito and Plummer. But, you know, Super Mario, the Plummer man comes through. So, uh, I mean, we're lucky on that one. But, boy, again, like over 162 – these things, you know, they don't they don't last forever, as we saw last year. You know, you, you can only wear a protective mask on your face and play with guts for so long. Eventually, mm-hmm. water finds its level, and that's, you know, going to happen here eventually. You just hope by then the cavalry is back. So, you know, they did their job and they filled the need. But, you know, there's only so many more times Nito and Plummer can be up with the game on the line. Do you think that that was with that Vientos tweet, uh, you know, God is great always or whatever? Maybe he's just like, thank you for hitting all my teammates. I'm going to get out of AAA very soon because there's no one left to fucking play. So, I mean, if if that's the case. uh, And, I mean, Vientos, I I even heard, you know, people are throwing around maybe Alvarez comes up as a bat at some point, especially if guys keep getting hurt. Maybe catch him, you know, get him eased into it, you know, down the road. I don't think he's ready yet. He's got 10 home runs in his last 20 games. McCann had his rehab start. He went over four with three Ks. So I was like, call him up. He's back to his old form. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> Bro, you're going over in your fucking rehab. Come on, man. It's like mm-hmm. with Dom Smith. Like Dom Smith went like one for four with like a walk. I don't think I, – honestly, I was like the Dom guy. I don't think we see him again. I think it's like his spirit might be broken even down in there. And like if he stops caring down there, that's a wrap. Well, we're going to have three guys going on paternity leave very soon because – I guess after the end of the season. Everybody was getting their fuck on. Everybody decided to leave it in in October. It's like everyone else is playing playoff baseball, and our guys are letting it soak. It's Jesus so, Christ. Who are the three people? I don't even know. Lugo, Peterson, and McNeil. Just oh. congrats to them. How about you guys do some fucking in the, real, in the regular season? We can give birth in the off season. Christ almighty. I fucking podcasted from a hospital room the day my son was born. I don't want these fucking guys leaving here going, you're playing baseball for three hours. That's Jesus Christ, fuck. that's yeah. it. Get, you, get your fuck on, guys. Come on. You don't save that shit for the offseason. Fuck February, March, April, right? Those are the three, four, you know, May even. Those are the three yeah. or four months. How where long do you think they're going to be months? gone for? Like two weeks? No, That's like, Mar- remember Murphy did that, and everyone was yeah, like, well, "Daniel Murphy fuck? was fucking free." No, it was like it's only like three days. It's, three days. Uh, like, remember, we, we, remember we didn't have Edwin Diaz. Oh no, that was his grandfather, not yeah, paternity. Crazy. My bad. <laughs> Different <laughs> circumstances. I, I, that, that, that was that was not a born dude. That was a dead dude. Yeah. Daniel Murphy was like a messenger of Christ and shit. You knew yeah. he was gonna. You knew he was gonna take like a, a year off for his kids. Everyone else, trust me, it's like. They're itching to get back there. They're like, okay, you good, honey? All right, come on, goodbye. Let's play with it. <laughs> uh, Large famously, uh, when he had his kids, he went home every night. Like, he didn't stay. I was like, did you sleep at the hospital? Because the beds are small. Like, the ca- you know, like the couches are tight there, whatever. He's like, no. He's like, I went back home. My neighbors went away, so I, I swam in their pool. I made myself, like, a nice little, like, meal. And I went back and visited Annie and the kids, like, afterwards. I remember being, like, told, like, why don't you go home? You get some rest. Uh, you know, you can take care of Shay or take care of business, whatever. And I was like, this feels like a trap. This feels like you're setting me up. I'm going to stay right fucking here the entire goddamn time. You need more ice, honey? Um, <laughs> so, but like, like you guys said, we're losing guys to injury. We're losing guys to non, what is it? Non-workplace events. We're losing guys to fucking paternity leave. Kids are coming out of vaginas and we're losing guys. There's a million different ways to lose guys. However, Fucking one silver lining in all this. That beautiful man, Anthony DeComo, who forgot to tweet it out last night. Anthony, it would have been nice if you tweeted it out last night. But nonetheless, men tweeted out last night. Doing the math on Max Scherzer, straight left oblique. He could return as soon as June 26th in Miami if everything goes perfectly. Even if the Mets proceed ultra-cautiously with Scherzer, it seems like he'll be back 
by Independence Day. That is the best fucking news I have heard in a long, long time. And I mean, we're 17 and nine since the injury too. And we faced very good teams. So, I mean, I couldn't imagine what our record would be if we had him. Yeah. I, I'll tell you right now, Chris Bass would have at least two more wins. Yeah. He's yeah. a different pitcher when Max is in the oh, dugout. Yep. And, and you got to think everybody is. I mean, Max is one of those dudes like those, you know, he's in the dugout, he's in the clubhouse, he's, he's teaching everybody all the time. So like, not only would you get, you know, better pitch, uh, better starts when he pitches, obviously, but like everything is elevated. And then God, if, if he's back by in June, oh, and then you think about Jake just getting like Jake sees him return and sees like he, that's motivation for him. Like, oh, this is what it's going to be like for me, too. But that is a, a huge lift, not only like literally, but figuratively. And then the trades they'll make on top of those two coming back because he can't call that a trade. I honestly, what, what do you think about this spin zone, which I genuinely believe in? The Yankees being absolutely out of control good. The Braves never losing, the lead being, you know, within striking distance has Steve Cohen being like, we're going to make a splash. Like, if everything's all good and we and the Yankees were sucking and we dominated the headlines and the city and we're up by 15 games, I think Cohen just chills out. I think this is when he likes to be like, "You oh, you think, you think you're good? Like, you think you're set? You've never dealt with me before. I'm going to go get a pitcher, a reliever, and a new fucking – you know, a new a new art sculpture, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and he did tell he, there was something in the post about um he does want to push over like if the opportunity is there he's gonna push over three hundred million tax whatever the fuck it is like it doesn't even matter to him. Fucking, you know, I, I love the other day when Fat Brian Windhorse was talking about the uh, the uh, the Golden State Warriors how they have a three hundred and forty million dollar payroll and their owner just pays for everything. It's like, yeah, that's how you win a fucking title. You pay great players what they're worth, and you have a guy who doesn't worry about penalties mm-hmm. and taxes. And so if, you know, if basketball's going to 300 plus, he'll easily, he'll take yeah. the fucking moon. Just Especially a- if he's pushed and prodded and, you know, he's in a competitive mood. Yeah, you don't ask for much from a multi-billionaire. Just spend hundreds of millions on your sports team, that's all. Well, it's also like smart business from his Bro, standpoint. Is- you get, it's like – um you get the penalty is only a percentage the first year and like it, it cruise further down the road. So it's like, if I'm only going to spend like 10%, whatever, I might as well just get the, I get the huge fine now, huge fine being smaller. Yeah. And then those guys are off the book after we win. Right. Like get 10% of, you know, a hundred extra right. million rather than just 10 extra million. Right. Um, I was listening to uh, Chrissy, Chrissy DiStefano's podcast, who was like an uh, honorary member of the Cohen family at this point. And he was telling uh, a story that he heard about Cohen. Uh, this is back in the day a little bit. I can't remember the other mogul involved, but it was another, like, he owned a record label, like one of these other, like, really big moguls. And he was set to pay Steve Cohen, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I don't remember the exact numbers, but he was set to pay him, like, $100 million for one of his pieces of art. Came over to the house that night. They had a party. He was going to, like, do the transaction there. They end up partying, getting so fucked up that either Cohen or the other guy accidentally put their elbow through the fucking painting, through the canvas. And, like, the deal was off. Cohen needed to go get it restored and, like, fixed and then ended up selling it back to him for, like, an extra $50 million when it was all fixed. <laughs> just, like, fantasy life, monopoly money. Oh, whoops, I just ruined my $100 million sale. Like, no big deal. If this guy has the opportunity to do it, He's doing it. And if this guy has the opportunity to sign Aaron Judge, I don't think it matters what the cost is or even if it's a smart move for a guy that's 30-plus and injury-prone or whatever. If if you swiped Aaron Judge away in, like, a, a potentially home run record-breaking season, I think he'd do that too. So I think people are forgetting that, like, Cohen is the ace up the sleeve where he likes to win, but he also likes to fuck other people. It's like, oh, you got your hopes up? Let me break your spirit. I'm I, all right. I, I'm that right feels for Juan Soto. If you're going to tell me he's our DH in the future, that's, no, no, fine. that's, what, I, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I think it'll be like, Oh no, no, we'll still get Soto too. But I'm just, I'm just grabbing judge to, to butt fuck the Yankees. We still have sights on our real right. Field. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, Kyle, how was the, how was the marathon last night? The walking out of treble. I know Frank, Frank was, was screaming at you. How was all your fault? Everything going wrong. Out last of pure night? spite. I ran like half of that fucking walk. 
So every time the Mets got up, I started the inning just running and then seeing how the inning would go. And then I'd walk if it didn't seem like anything was going to happen. I was good. It's actually like this was week 10. So I'm like fully conditioned into it now. We're like, I'm fine afterwards. My feet don't hurt. Like everything's surprisingly going well. I know I'm getting in shape. What are you fucking? Is this, is this exercise thing working? I am like calorie loading mode the next day. I eat whatever I want, which is a phenomenal feeling too. That's awesome. Actually last night before the walk, I had a full bottle of wine and pizza. And then I got on the treadmill. I felt fine. (laughs) Oh my God. That's why I I always said I wanted to do it because it's a good idea because it's like, I don't know. Does it, does it make exercise a little more bearable that you're doing it during a baseball game and doing it like for content and it's all, you know, it's all yeah. wrapped up into one rather than like I'm just going to go to the gym and suffer for a little while. At least there's a little something to it. It doesn't give you time to think about it either. Like if I'm running and I'm holding my phone and I'm trying to watch TV, like I'm not worried about how tired I am. I'm worried about not busting my ass and flying into the mirror behind me. Right. <laughs> Great point. Great point. All right. So we got uh, four against the Marlins here. <sighs> it's going to be a motherfucker. And like you said, the Braves have the, the Cubbies. So it's going to try. The, the Cubs who are also on a 10 game losing streak. So you have a team on a 14 game winning streak and a team on a 10 game losing streak. Sometimes Both teams are new. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, honestly, what the Cubs are doing, what the Nationals are doing, it's despicable. It's like, yep. I mean, these teams. Oh, the, the Nats are the biggest joke I've ever seen. Like, they they have the worst pitch. They have a, a 2018 Orioles type pitching staff. It, it it shouldn't be allowed. It's it's like, and the Cubs did it on an even more like grand scale, letting you know Rizzo go and Bryant go and Baez go. It's like, and those guys are all still around the league, and albeit not superstars anymore, they're all still like players that could just still be there for the fans. And they and they go sign Stroman in like a not even a half measure, like a one tenth measure. And just you, you fucking know, stink. I was at and it was like, yet the fans are still there, filled out, and they're still cheering when they score. And like, I don't so know. Their season's already over. Like, that's pretty much a foregone conclusion. Juan Soto's on a 17 million one year contract with them right now. Who's yeah. to say that they don't do what they just did to Scherzer and be like, let's just trade him and get as many prospects as we can for the one year contract? No, so, Soto's so. under contract till 2025. That's just arbitration. Oh, I'm still doing it. Yeah. It's no, like he's – we got to get to a few more years. Current contract. Current contract. One year, 17 million. That's just for this year? That's just, for, that's just for this year. He's under contract until – Okay, 2025. Yeah. It lines up with our contracts. I think Marte comes off the books once he would be a free agent. So. Okay. No, and they are – the thing is the Nats are also going to have like an ownership sale too, and the new owners are going to want to like have Juan Soto or at least have someone new to decide what to do with him. Yeah. But honestly, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know if it's the worst idea in the world. Like, like 2025, I guess, is, is far enough away. We've seen what the Mets can do in a quick turnaround. Yeah. But if you're as bad as the Nats are and you can get a lot for Soto, like if you have one singular piece – and you're going to really quickly try to build around him? I guess so. But if you're talking about a full-scale rebuild, you probably are better off getting something for him sooner. He's, than he's also one of those guys where the trade offer to get him is probably so high it doesn't even exist. Yeah, like, right, right. I mean, I would give – I would open up. I'd give our top 30 prospects and, like, four major leaguers right. for him, and I still don't even think that's enough. See you later, yeah. Because then you run into a Mookie Betts situation where you're watching him tear it up for the Dodgers if you're the if you're the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, we got we got four against the the Marlins here. Um, I mean, I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not hoping for a split, but like if if it ends up being a split, I know it's going to be an absolute like gut wrenching split just to get there. Jesus Aguilar is going to like gut me. And then he's going to like hug someone and just, I'm going to love him, but I'm going to hate him. Like you said, Jazz Chisholm, same thing on, uh, on contract and everything. His fucking name, Sandy. Um, he's going to fucking, you know, shove against us. So I, I guess like three and one is what I'm hoping for, but I'm like fully prepared for two and two and the Braves sweeping the fucking cubbies here. Is everyone in the same mindset, or what are we thinking? Oh, a split, a split would also mean we likely lose, like, a half game at the least in the standings because whatever, but I, I'm not going to be mad at a split because I'll be just a winning homestand. Yeah. I mean, they're 28 and 33. I think that we should realistically win three. If yeah. we're starting to yeah. be like, oh, well, we're going to take the split every time, like, we got to beat these bad teams. I know they're the Marlins, not but they're bad. Not that, bad like, uh, another 28 and 33 team – I would say we win three out of four. Like if we lose on Sunday to Alcantara, it's whatever. The other three games, they're up for grabs. 
That I mean, see, to me, that's almost what I I, I view it like. You got to win. It's a three game set. Win two of those, and then there's this extra game without Contra where he's gonna win. That's kind of how I you know because they're just they're just I don't. Uh, that's the one thing that still bothers me. Everything else is different. Everything else has changed. Uh, I guess we have yet to see. Maybe 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 the new Cohen regime beats the fuck out of the Marlins. Maybe that finally switches. But until I see it, uh, I don't I don't know if I believe it yet. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's also the. <laughs> I just want to say, it's also a brand of baseball the Marlins play. Like they play a ton of one run games. They're eight and sixteen in one run games this year. Like if you flip that around, it actually be very dangerous. But it's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Don't forget Don Mattingly's there. Whenever when he was in the other dugout with the Dodgers back in 2015, everything made me feel all right. I was like, Donnie, baseball will fuck something up. Him. Give me Buck. Buck will take care of business no matter what. I guess it depends when these goddamn babies start popping out too. Because then you lose a starter, you lose a reliever, you leave a fucking you lose a fucking potential batting champion. So I guess we'll see how it goes. But no matter what happens this weekend, crazy Marlins voodoo, or we just beat a bad team, at the end of the day, no matter what, we're the best team in baseball. And you gotta believe. Gotta believe. Gotta believe.